I'm sure all of us woke up this morning and the first thing we thought of was, how do I get more technology in my life? <laughs> right? I gotta go out and get me some. I don't have enough, right? Truth of the matter is, we are absolutely barraged by technology. I read a statistic recently where we have over one million mobile applications available to us. One million. We have multiple devices. How many folks have a tablet, a laptop, and a desktop? Smartphone. Okay? We have so many options and so many things to manage as part of our technology. But the truth of the matter is, what we really need to ask is how does technology enhance our life? Right? We don't buy technology just for technology's sake. That's a bad science fiction novel <laughs> where everything gets really bad really fast. Right? We need to make sure that technology enhances our lives. And that's really the promise of the cloud. The cloud is about bringing us convenience and efficiencies without having to invest individually in a massive infrastructure. It's there for us, right? The challenge for the user is that as we transition from this very easy, simplified world of the desktop-centric environment, and transition into the cloud, we now have abundant ways to generate content. And our content lives all over the place. We have a Facebook account. We have actually multiple media, social media sites. We have multiple devices. We have multiple storage locations. And now we have to manage all of that. It's very, very complex. Let me give you an example. I go on a trip. Let's say I go to Tibet. I take 250 photos. I take 50 photos and I place them on Flickr so that my friends can access them. I take another 25 photos and I put them on Facebook or another social media site. Then I take some of the photos that are private and personal to me that I don't want to share with, any, with anyone and I put on my desktop. I then take the remainder of the photos, I move them off of my cell phone and I put them in some sort of photo library. So now those 250 photos live in a multitude of locations, right? I would be hard pressed to find where did I put that particular photo in what particular location. But that's the challenge we have. Because in the old world, in the old world of a desktop centric environment, we went out, we bought a piece of software, we loaded it up on our desktop, we launched an application, we created a document, we close the document, we walk away from our desktop, we come back two days later, and there it is. <laughs> it's still there, right? We knew where to find it. It is not the case as we transition to the cloud. So what we really need to think about in order to enable the user is how do we help a user easily find their content and how can they securely and seamlessly share it or sync it. One method, which is alive and well on the internet, and it's big business, is called storage, right? There's a little company, I think they stood up about three years ago. They now just raised $400 million in Silicon Valley with a valuation of $5 billion. The company's roughly three years old. I can't tell you what their revenue is. I have no idea what their annual sales are. Their revenue model is free storage, okay? The concept is now we have to take a copy of all of our content and store it in a single location. But let's talk about what we mean by storage and how is that different than high availability, all right? Let's go to the physical world for a moment. In our physical world, we have a storage unit and it's free, great, what do we do? Do we take the entire contents of our home and put it in that storage unit because it's free? Doesn't make any sense. Do we put valuable stuff in there? Would we put a Monet in that storage unit? Would we put our kids in a storage unit? <coughs> Maybe if they're 28 and still at home, hey, you got your own place to live, finally. <laughs> and it's free, right. right? So there's a massive difference between storage and high availability. High availability means it is relevant to our life. We want to keep it relevant to our life, right? We want access to it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's the difference. In that context, storage includes your devices. 
right? So the storage on your devices should be used. They should be leveraged. Those resources aren't diminishing, they're expanding, right? They don't call it a stupid phone. <laughs> it's for a reason, okay? So this is about not aggregating, a, not aggregating a user's content. It's about unifying the user experience. That's what we have to focus on. So the truth of the matter is your data lives everywhere, right? And that is the promise of the cloud. The promise of the cloud is that you have choices on demand. You decide where you want to put your content. Not the vendor, you decide, right? And this is really where the rubber meets the road, right here. What are we willing to give up for convenience and, and the ability to easily manage our content? I happen to believe that security and privacy are not negotiable, right? I believe that we don't have to give that up to be able to easily manage our content. What we really have to do is shift our thinking. We have to shift away from the notion of the cloud and start thinking about my cloud and what that means, okay? So let's, let's take a look at what a unified user experience might look like. Good God, I hope it doesn't look like that, <laughs> okay? This is not a, meant to be a design piece. The artists and designers come later in the program. This is intended to convey a concept, okay? So think about this. I now have the freedom to keep and generate content wherever I want to, but I also have a consistent workflow that works across those content locations so that I can easily find my content, securely sync, and securely share it, right? So think of it as your personal browser, all right? You have the ability to actually register your content locations and catalog, catalog the content that is in it. It's like an index for the user. So no more do you have to consider, where is my stuff? This index will track it and man help you manage it. So it really empowers you to continue to make choices, but still have the convenience of easily finding your content and having the security that you need to sync and share it. The interesting thing about this is that right now, the notion is you are expected to manually consider, here's all my content in all these disparate locations. I'm gonna go out and grab this, put it in a unified location. I have to find this, put it in a unified location. So really what you're doing is you're adopting multiple workflows in order to manage your content. When in fact, you should have a single workflow, a ubiquitous workflow that works across your content locations. Right? The other thing that we need to consider is that this notion of having to move your content is really more of a burden. It creates more complexity. So imagine if we can go to a situation where we have this cloud where we're the absolute center of it. Our devices are included. Our content locations are included. We have the ability to make choices, to live up to the promise of the cloud. We're not limited anymore. We don't have somebody else making our, our decisions for us. You know, actually, it was never, ever intended that we have to aggregate our content with a single vendor in order to have convenience. That notion is a little bit like saying, we can solve all the traffic problems in the world by creating a giant car, right? It's ridiculous. It's not practical, and it's not reality. The reality is that our choices are gonna continue to grow. Right now, there's probably a new website somewhere that's gonna allow you to go out and create some content, and you should have the ability to do so and still not have to deal with the complexities because the promise of the cloud is to hide those complexities. And if we focus on unifying the user experience, we're able to minimize those complexities, but still give the user the power of being part of the cloud, providing those efficiencies, and creating convenience. So how many of you right now have adopted social networking? Okay. How many of you are using free storage? How many are using one vendor for free storage? How about this? 
How about, if as part of your cloud, you had the ability that now that you have this cloud that works on your behalf, again, we want technology to actually work for us, this cloud has the ability to anticipate your needs. What if all of a sudden your cloud said, hey, Janine actually is, has maxed out her free storage with this vendor. I'm going to go to the next vendor that offers free storage and max that out. And it sets it up seamlessly, automatically, on my behalf. I say to you, get all the free storage you can get. <laughs> it's a good thing, OK? But do it in a way that still creates convenience for you. Or how about this? I share a photo with a friend. Actually, I share a photo five times in the last two days. My cloud says, hey, Janine has actually shared this photo repeatedly. How about I put that in a section called her favorites? Just like a browser, right? So this browser now has given me a shortcut to my data. I don't have to go out and search again for that same photo that I tried to share over the last two days. Okay. The other option that we have is that we can start to do some really interesting things. We can start saying, if, if my cloud is working on my behalf, I can now apply analytics to it. I can say, I'd like to know how many documents I worked on in the last month that were related to TEDx. It's my cloud. It's working on my behalf, right? So let me give you some real world, world scenarios. We have. I'm at the coffee shop. I have my smartphone. And suddenly, my colleague says, you know, Janine, I would really like to see that uh, TEDx PowerPoint that you had. I say, great. I pull out my smartphone. I launch my personal browser. I say, find me that TEDx PowerPoint. Lo and behold, it's not actually in the cloud, but it's on my desktop at work. It's part of my cloud. So from that location, I can share it with my friend. I don't have to haul the data back across the network, load it on my smartphone, and then forward it. I'm actually using the technology smartly, right? And it's working on my behalf. I'll give you another example. I'm in a race to go to the airport. I open up my desktop. I'm madly working on some document. Emily, my assistant, says, Janine, you really have to go to the airport. I shut down, grab my laptop, go to the airport. And I open it up to work on the document. Lo and behold, it's not there. In this scenario, when I have my cloud working for me, I can pull it from my desktop easily and continue to work on it. If I don't have this type of a solution, the burden is on me to anticipate that I need to upload it to a single location in the cloud. And when I get to the airport, I need to adopt their workflow to access the data so that I can work on it. It's a very different scenario, very different. The other options that we have are, how about in, a, in the realm of our devices, OK? I have one device, my laptop, that I rarely use. I don't use my laptop that much, OK? I pull it out when I travel occasionally. Now I'm usually using a tablet. So my cloud says, you know what? Janine is, hardly ever uses her laptop. But she's in a PowerPoint, and I know she likes to have a PowerPoint highly available. So I'm going to automatically move it to her desktop that she works on every day. Again, the technology is anticipating my needs and supporting my workflow. Right? It's aware of what I want to do with my content. So what we really need to do is shift our thinking. We need to move away from this whole notion that it's the cloud or their cloud. And we need to start focusing on the concept of my cloud. And we need to do so in a way that does not acquiesce the ownership of our data. The promise of the cloud never intended for us to give up the ownership of our data. There is a better way. So as I leave you today, please remember, it is your cloud, not their cloud. Stay free.